We're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel here on a Wednesday afternoon, the four o'clock block. Rock. I think tech. Uh, rock. <laughs> the four o'clock rock. <laughs> and we're doing Hawaii, the state of clean energy. For all you people around the world who want to know what's going on in energy in Hawaii. And uh, we have like uh, six shows about energy. But our favorite show, our flagship show, is this one. Hawaii, the state <laughs> of clean energy. Through the auspices of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And we have Sharon Moriwaki, co-chair and spiritual leader <laughs> of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Welcome, Sharon. Aloha. <laughs> okay, we have a, we have a co-host today, um, and um, that is Isa, Isa Roca, yes. okay, who just happens to be the niece of <laughs> Veronica Roca, <laughs> uh, with the State who's, Energy Office, who is out the there in the wings here. somewhere. <laughs> Hi, Veronica. Hi, Veronica. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the show, Isa. Thank you. Okay, and we have Jonathan Howery. Jonathan Howery is um, a uh, is still an intern. Yeah, no, no, no executive. Not sorry. anymore. Oh, I haven't been an intern in years. That's why we're talking now. about the migration, the migration right. of intern to executive, Gross. and he's an executive in in STEM, yes. which is Ted Glothier's, uh, you know, company doing what magic black boxes that connect uh, the grid with uh, with renewables, yeah. Yeah. and he's involved in that. Okay. Mm, wow. So we're going to examine uh, with Jonathan exactly what it means to have been uh, an intern one place or another. And by the way, Isa is an intern right now today as we speak at this moment <laughs> with the Elemental Accelerator down the yes. block. So we're going to learn about that from her. And we're going to talk about the, the, what do you want to call it, the interaction of internship and executiveship, okay, in energy but in any entrepreneurial and startup activity for sure. What an exciting discussion. Great. Okay, let me begin by by asking you, uh, Jonathan, uh, what what you did as an intern and where and how you got that and why you did that. It's a multiple compound question. <laughs> why I did what I did. Do it. Why did I do it? <laughs> um, so I started out. Uh, I guess the easiest way to put it as why I did it. I got my undergraduate degree in physics and uh, physics, wow. yeah, physics, physics, astronomy. I wanted to be an astronaut once right. upon a time, uh, but unfortunately, the where I was uh, didn't lead me down that path, and so I reevaluated what I wanted to do, and I landed on uh, environmental science, that led to conservation, which led to renewable energy, and yeah. that led me to energy storage, where I am today. Okay, well, exciting. All right, so. Where were you as an intern? What did you do there? So uh, I was a uh, in the fellowship um, with Kupu under Rise. It was renewable internships for sustainable employment, and I was a fellowship for or a fellow for about a year. And under that fellowship, I was uh, working for Shifted Energy, which focused on actually pulling excess renewable energy from the grid and storing it as thermal energy in hot water heaters. Ah. Why did you do that? I mean, you, why didn't you get so, a job, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the time, it was still a growing startup. So um, uh, when business was good, I was actually promoted to project manager. You mean you got a job? Uh, See, that's yeah. really interesting. That's great, Let's huh? stop yeah, there for a moment. <laughs> you know, you come on one thing, and you're an, an intern, and happy enough to do that. And then all of a sudden, it gets to be a job. You must have done something right. Hard work. Hard work, determination, dedication, um, and you know, a push for a belief in a company that I also believed in, and that was big. What was uh, what? What do you think was most persuasive <laughs> to uh, what Olga Magad and the yeah. people you were working for that made them say, "Wait, stop everything! We have to make this intern into an, ex <laughs> an employee, executive person." So my internship was actually actually limited at 15 hours a week. And I was pulling about 25 to 30 because there were tasks that needed to be done and work that was available, and I just, I needed to do it. I, I wanted to do it. You knew it would help you. That too. How do you think it did help you? Hard work goes a long way. It goes a long Explain. way in any Explain. business. I work hard. It doesn't help me at all. <laughs> You're hosting the show. Look at where you are. Hard work got you where you are. I can't believe everything he said. <laughs> um, it's, it's just that many companies want to see people take the initiative. 
And that's something that I hold in my life. That's something I was taught to do at a young age. And that's what I exhibit in my professional career. Now, I am 26 years old. Notice how I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on the legal, the legal side of things. <laughs> nice answer. Thank you. <laughs> OK, <clears throat> cross-examination. Well, I'd like to know what what um, sparked you into going into Kupu to begin with, instead of going to you know, a job or you know why why Kupu and Rise? Well, in uh, 2014, I was actually working at least throughout the whole year. I worked seven different jobs throughout the entire year, Whoa. ranging at from the same time. Uh, no, spaced out out. At the same time, I was working for three different companies. It was, yeah, everything was part-time based. It was hard to find full-time work in Hawaii. Uh, but that, it just kind of led me to a path where I had actually applied for Kupu the year before and was passed over. Um, but the director at the time uh, actually kept my resume on file because she noticed my aptitude and my potential and that's point two. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the next yeah. year, yeah. and the next okay. year. We'll keep on yeah. coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Determination. You get credit yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Determination. Were you still in school, or you had already graduated at that point? Yeah, I graduated in uh, 2012, and then, um, and then after you were just that. Working well, I took six months off to travel the world oh. um, to be a little cultured and uh, My heart goes out to you. No yeah. wonder you can Stop. work hard. You've done your <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. And so, so when I how important was that? Oh, traveling the world immensely, yeah. immensely. I mean, I've been to forty-eight different states in the U.S. Um, and I've seen the change. Oh, that's 48. Oh. I've seen the change between each state and how they're unique, and going to Europe and Southeast Asia and Australia and seeing how cultures behave and um, how the people are and they live was very valuable. And just knowing, um, like that global diversity. You want to hire him right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Jonathan, can you tell me more about how your internship helped you get to where you are now? So uh, after my internship ended, um, unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot of work left with Shifted Energy. Uh, so they downgraded my hours. But I had portrayed or exuberated um, that work ethic on where I was. And that made a few of the other cohort companies take an interest in me. Um, and that led to you know some interviews and sit downs yeah. and kind of let me start off at part time, of course, with uh, each company I'd worked with, and then finally I went full time with STEM. So yeah. was was, was STEM that a complete one answer to your question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. Well, Jeff to ask him a follow up. No, no, it was a good okay, answer. All right, okay. But was STEM was STEM one of the cohorts that you were in? Uh, you had a part time job with, or it was like a totally new company that? You no, had? I I started off as a uh, part time with STEM. Oh, yeah, and for and twenty hours, and then I was working with Shifted uh, Energy as well for I don't know ten fifteen hours, and then I also worked uh, part time with Pono Home. Uh, who does energy efficiency mm -hmm. uh, We had as them well. on last week. Yeah. 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 yeah, they were part of the cohort. So compare that to your experience at Elemental. Yes. So How does, how does that compare? Uh, well, at Elemental, I am kind of a summer intern, so I kind of help promote Elemental and kind of our plans for how Elemental will grow as a company. Okay. What do you do every day? So I mean, aside <laughs> from co-host on <laughs> show here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Um, so every day I just kind of come in, ask people how I can help them. I usually help plan stuff like organizing and you know, stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Do a lot of writing? Um, yeah, I do. I mostly for myself though, mostly as like notes on what to keep in mind and like what elemental's looking for. Yeah. I, I have found <clears throat> and I like your reaction to it that if you're in an entrepreneurial situation, that includes being an intern in an entrepreneurial situation, you have to, you have to articulate. Yeah. What did you call it? Exuberate. Uh, he coined <laughs> that word just a few minutes ago. I don't know how to spell it, but it sounds terrific. Beautiful. <laughs> that means you do something with exuberance. Right, yeah. right. Whatever it is, it's just, <laughs> right. we got it. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> um, you have to be able to articulate what you're doing, mm -hmm. both in, in writing and orally. And uh, I, I, somewhere in my career, I became aware that if you couldn't do that, you were going to have a glass ceiling. 
and you and not everybody can going forward. So not you know all the time. So you have to train yourself. You have to train yourself to do that. You have to train yourself to use the language to be able to write. You know, writing does not come by some magical <laughs> light from heaven. <laughs> writing comes by dint of hard work in the language. You know, um, and I wondered about that in your experience. Uh, you know, somewhere along the line, you, you got to be the kind of guy who could articulate what you're doing. Did you have to work at that, or did it come naturally, or, or is it out of a bottle? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Actually, the more the more experience you get, especially dealing with the, the customers um, and explaining what you do over and over again, that it 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 just comes with experience. Like the more you practice, the more you speak, the more you're able to uh, share your mission, your vision, your values, your company's values, everything along that. The more you do it, the easier it, it becomes. Yeah. Have you you've been involved in pitches? Have you been involved in pitches or pitch fests, as they used to call them? I think I, they still do call them that. Yeah, I did um, during my fellowship, but not so much when I, as long as I've lived and worked with uh, STEM. So. Yeah. There'll be a time. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I would say that in the world of business today, especially tech business, um, it's all about pitching. It's all about telling people what you're doing and trying to make them come on board in one way or another, uh, mostly in money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say every networking event I've been to is a way to pitch what I yeah. do. Yeah. I, I remember mm -hmm. going to uh, Hawaii Venture Capital Association meetings where they would have all kinds of pitch formats. You know, people get up there and pitch. And you know, like you'd work for months on a on a, on a pitch that was going to last ninety seconds. <laughs> Anything <laughs> longer, you'd lose your crowd. Right, you'd elevators, lose small elevators. elevators. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the other thing that comes to me out of this, uh, and this we'll discuss this and then take a break, um, is that this is all about um, relationships. So is everything, actually. You know, what does it say? Real estate law is not about real estate; it's about relations. You know, the law of physics mm -hmm. is not about physics, it's about relations. <laughs> Maybe the exaggeration. <laughs> no, the atoms. <laughs> you get into a, an intern program or an accelerator, you know, like Elemental or otherwise. Um, you are learning from other people in the cohort. Mm -hmm. uh, you are talking to them all the time. We'll talk about money in a minute, but for now, I mean, for this part of the discussion, it seems to me that you want to have contact with people. You want to network with people who can who are in a similar circumstance and who can teach you what they are learning and what they are teaching. Right. And, and th th that's the modern way of creating a company, isn't it? I mean, you can do it all by yourself, but that's slower. If you want to, you know, in any entrepreneurial company now, you have to move, you have to be quick. There's no time to waste. You know, your competitors are nipping at your heels. And the way to, the way to keep ahead of the pack is to talk to your peers, right? Yeah. Am I right? No, you're very right. And Eventually, once you make enough contacts and you're in a very stable position, that gives you the opportunity to pass it forward. So, people who are looking for employment you or looking for that? opportunity. You have the time to do that? I, I do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I founded the, uh, one of my organizations just to do that as well. Yeah. That's what John, uh, uh, I'm blocking this name, the one in Central Pacific Bank, John Dean, he created an organization mm -hmm. about paying it forward about helping people, you know, just the way somebody else helped you. Do you see that happening in Elemental now? Yes. Um, Elemental helps kind of create these resources for people so they could learn how to articulate and how to communicate with other people so they could help for the resources that they need for their company. Okay, you know what? Guess what, Isaac? It's, um, it's almost time for a break, and I was hoping, Isaac, that you would announce the break as my co-host in this, <laughs> our co-host. Could you do that? Okay. Okay. Look, look at uh, camera one over there. Announce the break. It's time for a break. <laughs> You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech.
Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are, too. Aloha. Yours. Okay, we're back. We're live. And guess what? Sharon Moriwaki is going to take us back. Yay. I just want to um, remind people of, that we have Hawaii Clean Energy Day. It's our ninth annual. And this year we're looking at pathways to transportation, clean transportation. It's on August 28th, the YWCA, from 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m. to 6 o'clock, all the way to the Pauhana Power Party. But in between, we have quite a few speakers. We've got uh, the Portland Metro Councilor, uh, Craig Dirksen. Uh, Portland's and, great. It's a and, great place and to learn. And it's beautiful because he's going to take us from their vision to actually executing on a transit system that works, and it's very energy efficient. And we also have uh, a Dr. Eric, Eric Sundquist, who is from Michigan Sustainable um, Transportation Institute. And he's going to talk about measures of success. How do you know that you have a good transportation system and you're actually lowering your use of energy? Uh, and we have all of the local experts from, uh, from the energy office to uh, Department of Transportation, the counties, all coming together to look at how we can be more energy efficient, use renewable energy sources for our transportation system. Here in Hawaii. Very important program, August 28th. August 28th. Hawaii Energy Policy dot Hawaii Hawaii dot edu. Edu. I see Please I got that. Please join us. Yeah, pretty good. Hey, very yeah. good. Yeah, come down. It'd be great. This is important. There's a lot of very work important. to be done. And speaking of work to be done, um, STEM, right now, mm -hmm. STEM, what is it doing? <laughs> I'm giving him a chance to pitch. <laughs> well, uh, we have our one megawatt of storage uh, distributed at NAG storage across the entire island of Oahu. We are finishing up one of our projects it's called the 400 Power Monitor Project, where we deliver uh, real-time energy data to all Hawaii DOE schools. Um, next steps, we're actually planning on expanding that, uh, as well as we have quite a few projects in the pipeline on our business development side, which is uh, hush hush at the moment on oh, who. Oh, you can tell us. <laughs> on who is doing that. Make him tell us. It's like nobody's recording you Nobody's anything. recording. Nobody's, nobody's recording. listening to this live. <laughs> How about you? What are you doing all day? Uh, well, I wear multiple hats at the company. And, of course, uh, we would expect nothing. <laughs> And I love having that flexibility too, but I work anywhere from uh, accounting and invoicing to project management and uh, handling the electricians and installations, coordinating there, um, to new business, business development, and uh, market analysis. So I'm, I'm all over the place. Okay, what about the technology? Tell us about STEM's technology. So the technology behind STEM is the way I like to describe STEM is we're a software company. Um, with energy storage solutions. So we work in the commercial industry on uh, either selling or leasing out our energy storage um, and focusing on peak demand management and demand reduction. So what do you think, guys? That's pretty good, huh? You did pretty good. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. <laughs> we also work closely with Hiko. Why did so. you bring him down, though? <laughs> you brought him down for a reason. What was it? Uh, I'm not entirely sure yet. <laughs> I'm here for the face value. <laughs> so what's it like when you have all these uh, you know, cohort companies around and you are engaging with all these people? What's it like? Um, how do you get them to talk to each other? Um, you know, it's nice to see kind of how a team works and how the company works in general because I'm still kind of like in that process where I'm learning about renewable energy and kind of seeing in what part of renewable energy I would like to work in. But for these companies, I just kind of ask them about what they're doing, ask them about any new projects in the company, and I kind of say, oh, this company's like similar, maybe you should ah, talk to them. You're the connector. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's all about connection, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What about funding? You getting any money from anybody these days? Where are you, how are you being funded? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 
the one megawatt project was funded by the Elemental Accelerator, mm -hmm. and that kind of helped us solve the chicken of the egg problem coming out here to Hawaii and trying to recruit customers to adopt energy storage, um, which we have the largest behind the meter energy storage system in Hawaii, which I, I find what fascinating. What does that mean, behind the meter? Uh, behind the meter is just that. We work behind the meter, like Hiko's utility meter attached to switch gear. Um, we install behind that to be able to uh, basically export energy um, when the customer's load is at the highest point. So we're cutting off that little peak and evening out their load and distributing that energy. And the benefit to the community? Saves money to the customer directly. Uh, it makes the grid more efficient. Um, and we also work closely with the utility on deploying any energy in the battery storage towers that isn't being used to actually help level off the grid. So do, do you have to get the consent of all the customers? or We do. You, you, you process everything? Yeah, all of that's in our contracts that wow. uh, we can work with grid services. So we always make sure that the customer comes first. Um, so they get first access to the battery and uh, the energy stored there. And if they're not using it, then HECO can use it or any utility can use it. Boy, you got to be, you know, you're in an area that's changing so fast. It's a rapid and industry. It's, it's, and there are people coming into that area, you mm -hmm. know, because they see there's a benefit to being there and they're your competitors. How do you, how do you deal with that? Do you sleep well? I, I do sleep well. Um, I think the industry is changing and energy storage is a unique industry to be in, in that we want more competition because more competition will actually open up the market quicker. And uh, Tad Glauthier, who is VP of Operations for STEM, he helped co-found uh, the Distributed Energy Resources Council of Hawaii, which gets all of the players in the room working on policy to actually Leslie help open Cole up that market. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. Leslie Colbrooks. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Is, is he in the right place? Is he going <laughs> the right direction? Yes. What do you expect him to do going forward? Do you think he'll stay there a long time? Of course, because... Uh, how long? A year? Two? <laughs> three? I can't, I can't really say, but... <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you're doing a good job. <laughs> I am really happy where I am. <laughs> I mean, Sharon can't hire you away from the energy, the energy policy firm. Okay, cross-examination, Sharon. Well, I, so what would make you stay in STEM or other opportunities that you can use your skills, and you have quite a few, mm -hmm. to move on, and where would you be moving on? What is your passion? Uh, well, I started out in astronomy and physics. I moved to environment and conservation, restoration, renewable energy, and landed on energy storage. So I've, I've actually found my niche where I like working. Really? You're not going back to physics then? <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the energy side. I like the energy side. Um, but my passion also lies in um, just bringing people together and uh, talking. Like, I think there's more conversations that need to be happening, not just in Hawaii, but all around the world. So do you think you're your passion with the, the interaction, collaboration, <laughs> working with people. What part of that does technology play or is it now moving to sort of a new dimension than, you know, experimenting and finding new technological solutions? It's definitely expanding and growing and uh, I can't really say sure where that's going to lead, but I just am excited for where the future is heading. Good. Good answer. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> well, I, I really, I mean, our discussion has been very helpful for me to understand what it's like to be in a situation like you're in. And I, I suggest that my, well, my, my, uh, my intuition tells me you'll be a good CEO someday soon. Yeah. Well, I did help uh, co-found and am vice chairman of uh, the Sustainable Leader Network, um, where we actually are a professional development network working on getting either recent grads or people just entering the working world, um, just uh, opportunities and skills to advance in their career. How about the money? Are you, are you looking for uh, big bucks? I'm actually you not in it for the money. You want to be a zillionaire? No. no. More money, more problems. 
Very interesting. I, Money complicates Ooh. life. <laughs> right. I'm in it for the community Very and good. making a positive impact on society. And that's, that's what I've seen has been lacking. And I think we need to change that. And we need to make more positive choices. This is a new generation. Isn't yeah. that exciting? Yeah. You don't sound like Donald Trump at all. <laughs> Never mind. OK, it's time to, it's time to wrap, up. wrap up. Isaac, wrap can, up. You, can you wrap up for us? Give us a summary of what's happened and give us your impressions. OK, so we've learned about what Jonathan does and kind of stems his projects and kind of um, <laughs> discussing what um, kind of like the future plans for STEM and what to expect. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, all right. Valuable conversation. And the characteristics of being <laughs> exuberant and, and, and knowing your passion and being able to move forward with it and luckily in, in the renewable energy space That's and storage. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jay. Wonderful to talk to you guys. Aloha. Thanks for coming Aloha. down. Aloha. <laughs> and good luck for the future. For the <laughs> future. And sign up for the thing on the 28th of August. Oh, yes. Come to Coffee. Clean Transportation. Get into yeah. that space, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> talk about networking. Wow. I would love to network there. <laughs> Come to the space. <laughs>